Hi and welcome back to a new video. In today's video we will check out and delete this CPU which should not be in my hands because this is supposed to be released in like four or five months. This is a Sapphire Rapids Extreme Core Count CPU. At least that's what listed on the IHS. It's a SPRXCC which means this could contain up to 56 cores on the CPU itself. I bought this on eBay. It's surprisingly easy to get these CPUs. They are socket 4677, which is the successor of the current like Cascade Lake X based Xeon CPUs. You might know them with the socket 3647. It's the same what I'm using in my personal rig with the 3175X Xeon unlocked CPU with 28 cores and apparently those are available with up to 56 cores and that should be quite interesting considering at least that this will be released in like four to five months. Unfortunately, right now it's not possible for me to get any mainboard to test the CPU with. That's also the reason why the only thing we can do with it is deleting. Because obviously I asked some of my sources within the industry and there are prototyping boards for these sockets and CPUs. But I mean, it's quite obvious if I'm going to approach Asus, for example, and ask them about a prototyping board and they send one to me, Intel is not going to be happy and then it would also be obvious where the source came from or the board came from. And since this is just bought from eBay, um, it should be fine. And as I said before, the upcoming Sapphire Rapid CPUs will be available with up to 56 cores, I think up to 112 PCI Express lanes, TDP 350 watts, um, different configurations up to I think 8 CPUs per mainboard. So dual CPU or quad CPU or octa CPU configuration also with octa memory channel. So it should be a very, very performant platform and it also can feature HBM2E, which is basically getting on par with AMD's 3DV cache on the Epic Milan CPUs. Yeah, should be quite interesting. Let's just put this in the deleter, which we slightly modified. As you can see, we had to mill away some of the parts. Originally, when I just bought the CPU online, I thought it's the same package size as 3647, but that's not the case. The CPU is slightly larger by like 1.5 millimeter. It's not much, but it's too much to fit into the 3647 deleter. That's why we slightly modified this one. Let's check what we can find underneath the IHS. Looking at the backside of the CPU, we can already see some interesting patterns. I think that's the same as what we've already seen on all the Lake S CPUs, like the 12900K. And I'm pretty sure this is also related to PCIe 5.0 or also DDR5, because this CPU should also feature both of them. And apart from that, it's just a huge amount of pins and the IHS is also massive. It just covers the entire PCB basically. Only two small areas with some caps down there and up here are not covered by the IHS. But these two areas will also make the deleting process a bit more problematic or at least we will, no matter what we are going to do, we will permanently damage the CPU. If we just insert it in the delete diamate and turn the screw a little bit, you can see the slider is pushing out from here and it will, no matter what we're going to do, it will straight either push on these caps or on these caps right here depending on what kind of direction I'm going to choose to use the delete I made with. The deleting process itself will be very similar to previous CPUs we used also for 3647 or any other CPU which is recent and soldered. We will put the entire thing into the oven at about 200 to 220 degrees Celsius. So we know that the indium solder which is sitting underneath will be melted. And then we just use the screw to push against the IHS from the side. I use just some sheer force to remove the glue which should sit around all of the edges. Temperature should be spot on. We need at least 155 degrees Celsius. Put it on the IHS and now let's just go ahead. Well, I think that didn't work out as it intended. Damn. Oh shit. That is the first time I had such a huge deleting fail. I'm glad I don't need this CPU for anything, but this is terrible. Wow, I failed really hard. And also on the other side, 
Seems like the height was not perfect. That the litter is simply not made for the CPU, which I just noticed. I mean, we touched this area right here, so we applied some force here, but not enough. And the PCB on the other side broke. Now that I killed the CPU anyway, shouldn't matter to just use a razor blade and loosen the glue a little bit. Should make our second deleting attempt probably a lot easier. Usually I'm not a friend of doing this because there's always a high risk in damaging the PCB, but yeah, let's not talk about damaging the PCB. And because the PCB broke, I have to cut away these parts, otherwise it won't work in the litter anymore. Attempt number two. Now that it looks much better. Ah, oh, very nice, it worked. Now that I cleaned the CPU partially from the indium solder, it looks a bit less terrible. There is still a very tough damage to the PCB on the right side, which is okay, because we only wanted to access the dice anyway. The four dice, those are four dice, you can see it with the tiny lines in between, are connected with a technology which is called EMIP. And the EMIP technology is basically additional silicon dice sitting underneath these inside the package and connecting the individual dies with each other. We also have a fifth one, tiny one on the left, should be an FPGA. And it's not the first time that Intel is using FPGAs in addition, like on substrate directly with the CPU. I remember a Skylake X CPU from 2018 Xeon Gold, like a 6000 series Xeon, and it also came directly with FPGA, which is a programmable CPU and it's directly connected with the dice should be with PCIe 4.0 or 3.0. Surface wise, this CPU has 1600 square millimeter of silicon. Comparing this with a typical Intel desktop CPU, which has about like 180 to 200 square millimeters, this is about eight to 10 times more. This will make manufacturing of these CPUs very, very cost intensive, not only because of the raw silicon size itself, because the silicon itself is already expensive, but also because the yield rate will always be lower whenever the chip size increases. On the CPU, we always have additional SMD components like all these capacitors you can see on the right. And some of these capacitors are hidden underneath an additional layer, which is totally different from the glue that is used on the outer side. It's definitely to protect them underneath, probably related to the soldering process, but this is a bit soft. We'll try if I can peel this off. I think I was wrong because it feels, after inspecting this further and trying to remove this, it feels to be the same like the glue that was used for gluing the IHS to the CPU. All right, it's barbecue time again. I am absolutely satisfied looking at the result. My main goal was just to get one chiplet out there in one piece and already the first one worked out and the second one as well. I left the other two on there. You can see these are the back sides of the chiplets. We will inspect all of that in a second. First of all, I'm going to clean that with some alcohol because there are still like a lot of burning residues left on the PCB. We are now inspecting the underside of the chip and on the right, where you can see all these bumps underneath, that is the typical area which is connecting the chip to the PCB. And the area on the left, which is a lot finer, that is the contact area for the EMIP. And I'm not sure if it's partially already sticking to the die, like if some of the like silicon came loose from the PCB and it's now sticking on there. It's very hard to see on the camera, but I think we will inspect that further and maybe also check it out under the microscope. And that's the counterpart on the PCB. We have five connections from each chiplet to the others. So checking out the bottom left to the bottom right, we have one silicon chip sitting underneath right here. We have one right here and three on the top left side, which is five in total per chip. 
For easier comparison and also measurement reasons, I decided to put the substrate underneath the USB microscope, which allows measurements directly here on this PC. The area on the right side is forming the connection between the CPU chiplet and also the normal PCB, which is sitting underneath. We have a pitch of about 0.1 millimeter and a diameter of the bump of about 60 micrometers. The area on the left is the EMIP area and there we can see the pitch of about 53 micrometers. Intel lists the pitch of Cephal Rapids with 55 micrometers and that's perfectly in line because I guess my measurement on this scale is pretty poor so even 53 is very much in line. For comparison a human hair has a diameter of about 60 micrometers that's always a very good comparison. The diameter of such a bump is about 30 micrometers. And just to give you an orientation which position we just inspected now you can see the connection between the two remaining chiplets and the area right here was where we just zoomed in and took the measurements. About one day later I started etching the chip for die shots. You can see it's just the first etching process. I started with grinding the first metal layer, well first starting to grind off all the solder bumps then the first metal layer and then started etching with iron 3 chloride. And that is the result which you can see right now and depending on the position of the light you can see different kind of reflections. You can see some holes which is starting to etch the second layer. You can already see like the three big areas on the left. Those are the EMIP connections for the next chip and also the other two like bigger areas on top. But you can also see in the center there are a lot of cores on this die. But I will now continue etching with a different acid and then we'll be back and then it should be even or much better than what we can see right now. Again almost a day later I'm pretty much done with the die shot and I'm not that satisfied but that's also my first time doing a die shot with Intel 7 which is basically 10 nanometers something like super enhanced whatever but it's really complicated to do die shots on this level because it's so small that just leaving it a little bit too long inside the acid yeah I mean the colors are beautiful but you cannot really tell where are the cores or whatever so yeah it looks nice but I think it has very limited value Unfortunately the die shots, even though they are still quite beautiful with all these green and blue colors and everything, it still looks nice but it doesn't look as clear as what we've seen before in different um, die shots we did so far. Not sure if that was related to the acid I was using or something I was doing wrong with the process. Luckily I still have three dies left to try with Intel 7, so maybe for the next CPU it will look a little bit better. But let's head over to this image which we still have from the etching of the iron 3 chloride which gives a clear look on the left to the EMIP, three fields there, two fields on top with EMIP and the EMIP, just to clarify this again, is forming a connection between four of these dies with silicon dies and not going through the PCB package itself which in theory should be much quicker and also act like the CPU would just be manufactured out of one big piece of silicon and not four individual ones. That's the theory. And in the center of the chip we can see 16 fields. You could guess that it's 16 cores but there should also be an IMC somewhere and also judging because it has octa channel it also could be that two of these fields are for IMC depending on the exact chip design I'm not sure about that yet could either be 15 or 14 cores per die which would equal in 56 or up to 60 cores per CPU which is quite impressive and looking at this picture again the bottom area like the bottom fourth should be the SA area like everything which is PCI Express controller related and also what is totally on the bottom those should be the connections for PCI Express if you zoom in on this area with like a microscope you can even count the individual PCI Express lanes and totally on the right what we can see there should maybe be the connection for HBM2E which was not pres present on the CPU but could be on any future like CPUs that are more close to release. What I personally hope for is that Intel will make a new version of maybe the 3175X for desktop. I hope they will have some unlocked desktop version so we can continue building irrationality systems like my personal rig I'm using right now that would be amazing if there would be like an unlocked version for desktop and not only 
the locked and expensive CPUs. Well, I guess they will still be expensive, but maybe a little bit less expensive and unlocked for desktop. All right, I still hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.